Hi everybody, welcome back to Insight. Today, I'm going to be talking about uh, an interesting discussion that I've had with uh, a couple of people regarding uh, cell phone cameras and DSLRs. Now, basically, uh, a number of people that I've uh, discussed this with have argued that in the not-too-distant future, smartphones will replace full-sized cameras. Now, I'm not going to argue with the incredible technological advances that have been made in smartphone technology, the amazing cameras on board, etc., etc. However, at this point in time, cell phone technology and cameras will not, cannot replace the DSLR cameras. In this vlog, I'm going to give you the main reasons why I think cell phones are not yet ready for prime time photography. All right, now, before I begin, I just need to say that I love my smartphone. When I have nothing else, I will definitely use my smartphone to get an image. As they say, you need to use what you have. However, if I have a better camera in hand, I will never even consider using my smartphone instead of my DSLR. If I have my DSLR with me, uh, I will use it, I will always use it over my smartphone. Because let's face it, as good as a smartphone is, it cannot do what a full-sized DSLR camera can do. One of the most important things that it can't do is give you the artistic flexibility that you can get with a full-sized camera. And as a true photographer, flexibility, the ability to create an image is very important to get what you have in your mind in the photograph. So let me give you my four reasons why I don't think that smartphones will replace DSLRs, at least not in the near future. Number one, manual control. So one of the main deficits of smartphones is that they do not give you full manual control of your image. Most smartphones are fully automatic. Uh, sure, you can have some manual control. Some smartphones give you some manual control. But the manual control that you do have is dependent on the actual technology that's in the camera. So the lens that's on the camera, the sensor side of the, of the camera. For the most part, what cell phone cameras give you uh, is, um, you know, pretty much automatic. And you've got very little control as to what you can actually do with the technology that's on board. So that's a big deficit. That's deficit number one. Number two, depth of field. So with a DSLR, you can control the depth of field and do selective focus. And, and this is really, really important um, in photography, uh, letting the photographer decide what they will focus on and you know, keeping everything else uh, in, in a blur is um, an important part of the creative side of photography. Uh, unfortunately, smartphones don't give you selective focus. It's nearly impossible to get selective focus, um, primarily because of the kind of lens that's on board as well as the size of the sensor. So I'm going to be talking about lenses and sensors in a minute, but uh, essentially selective focus on a smartphone is pretty much impossible. You have to go with uh, everything in focus for the most part, which means that your creativity is uh, severely limited. Okay, number three, interchangeable lenses. Smartphones do not have interchangeable lenses. Phone manufacturers basically have to strike a sweet spot between wide angle and telephoto 
lenses with uh, cell phones. And the telephoto side of it often gets the short end of the stick. Now, yeah, you can buy uh, adapters that you can put on your cell phone to mimic uh, te a telephoto lens, but these adapters are uh, very gimmicky. Uh, they, they don't work all that well, and they're not that practical. And so, you know, ultimately, you pretty much have to settle for the uh, wide angle uh, lens that's on board most uh, cell phones. And, and related to this uh, pr problem is the fact that if you, let's say, want to do a portrait, well, it's almost impossible to do one with a uh, smartphone because uh, the wide angle lens distorts the face of the person that you're trying to shoot. With a DSLR, there is a lens for every occasion and for every situation and you can change one lens with another, which again gives you a lot of uh, creative flexibility. Okay, number four, large sensors. This is really important uh, because no matter how good a smartphone camera is, it is limited by its sensor size. And the sensor size on a smartphone at this point in time is a matter of physics. There is no way for camera manufacturers to put large sensors on a tiny little smartphone. And the larger the sensor, the better the image tends to be because the sensor picks up, a large sensor picks up light better. Uh, a large sensor allows you to do um, you know, depth of field better. Uh, a large sensor uh, just overall creates a, a better image in low light conditions. Uh, there are lots of reasons to have a large sensor on your camera and um, there's no way for manufacturers to put a large sensor, not at least at this point in time, on their cell phone. So, you know, if you consider my 5D Mark II and my cell phone, the two of those cameras, well, my 5D Mark II has a sensor that's probably 20 to 30 times the size of the sensor on my smartphone, which means that I can shoot high ISO without losing a lot of quality. Um, it means that if there's not a lot of light, I can shoot at ISO as high as 6400 uh, and still get a respectable uh, image. Now, if I try to do the same thing using my cell phone, well, Let's just say that the results uh, would not be pretty. So, having said all of this, I'm going to go back a little bit and kind of seem like I'm contradicting myself, but I'm not. Having said all of this, one fact does not change. Both the DSLR and smartphones can take amazing photographs. And this is because ultimately a good photograph is dependent on the talents of the photographer. The technology that one uses is only partially responsible for the final outcome. It helps, that's all. An $8,000 camera does not make an amazing photograph. It's the eye of the photographer, the photographer's ability to discern the composition of a beautiful image, the photographer's ability to navigate through the chaos of reality and find that nugget that will make an amazing photograph. That's what's important. So while I think that it's going to be a long time before the DSLR is replaced by a tiny little smartphone, I do think that smartphones are able to provide amazing opportunities for photography. In fact, smartphones have made us a culture of photographs, which means basically that a lot of people love photography because of their smartphones. In fact, I have seen many people decide to go out and buy a full-sized camera because they got into photography using their smartphone. Another thing about the proliferation of smartphones is that they tend to make professional photographers better at their craft. 
And this is because people's demands for high quality photographs has gone up exponentially given the fact that we are bombarded with a barrage of photographs all day long, mostly taken by smartphones, which means that people's tolerance for low quality images is very low. They expect to see amazing photographs and they don't tolerate poorly framed, composed or conceived images very well. So this puts a greater burden on photographers to hone their skills and create better and better images. So to sum it up, I have absolutely nothing against smartphones. They are an amazing technology and I will continue to use my smartphone to take photographs. However, if I want to do more than simply take a picture, if I want to be creative and make the photograph, then I will turn to my full-sized camera because it is a tool built for creativity and goes far beyond simply snapping a picture. So, if you agree with me, let me know. If you think that I'm wrong, if you think that smartphones are going to be the way of the future, let me know that as well. And um, if you don't mind, please subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. It will mean a lot to me. And uh, I will see you later for another video. Take care for now and uh, be well. Bye-bye.